I've recently adopted a dog and her name's Freya. She's really cute and she's super active. That's probably one of the reasons why my family and I love her. But since she's a dog, she tends to shed a lot of fur and I'm someone who cannot tahan if my house is very dirty. And because of that, I have to constantly clean my house and I find it very mafan. So I thought, can technology help me? This is the Roborock S7 and this robot vacuum can also mop. And the best part is that it can do both simultaneously. That means I don't have to do any of the cleaning and I can rely on the robot vacuum to clean my house. But is it that simple? To find out, I spent a couple of weeks with the Roborock S7 and here's my full review. Roborock hasn't done anything too special when it comes to the design of the S7 because it actually looks very similar to its predecessor. The S7 comes with a circular body and it is less than 10cm tall which is just nice enough to go under most furniture. But it is on the heavier side though. This vacuum weighs 4.7kg which is a lot heavier than most of the robot vacuums out there. To put things into perspective, the Xiaomi Mi Vacuum 1C only weighs 3.6kg so there's like a 1kg difference between the two vacuums and that's before you even fill the S7 up with water. But the robot vacuum feels really premium and sturdy so that's a good thing. There's also a cover which you can flip open like this and it will reveal the dustbin. The Wi-Fi indicator is also over there so you know when you're connected to the Wi-Fi. There's also a bright orange button at the back that releases the water tank which you need to fill for mopping. And when you flip the Roborock S7 over, you'll see that there's a red rubber brush that sits between two large rubber wheels. Roborock mentioned that the rubber brush is supposed to agitate dust off carpets better than previous gen rubber and bristle brush. There's also a bunch of sensor placed around the edges including one that detects carpet which is located near the omnidirectional wheel at the front. You will also find a removable mopping plate and a reusable microfiber pad for mopping purposes. So before you start cleaning, remember to install the Roborock app on your phone because you will need it to control the Roborock S7. But don't worry, it is available on App Store and also Google Play Store. But if you're using a Huawei device, unfortunately, this app is not available on the Huawei App Gallery. It is actually very easy to set up on your phone. Just create an account on the app, add your device and connect to your Wi-Fi network and that's basically it. You can also choose to control the Roborock with the buttons on the S7 itself or you can use voice assistants like Google Assistant, Alexa or Siri. Smart Home Hub apps like Google Home and also Mi Home are also compatible with the S7. But out of all of the options, I still prefer to use the Roborock with the app itself because I always have my phone with me and you get a lot more control with the app. The first time you run the Roborock S7, it will map your home with LiDAR. If you don't know what LiDAR is, that's fine. It's basically a system that allows the vacuum to see its surroundings. This helps the vacuum to find its way around the house and map it accordingly. The first mapping run might take a little longer because it will bump into things like your table or shelves. But once the vacuum gets used to the room, the vacuum process is surprisingly quick. In the app itself, you can also edit rooms to merge or divide spaces. And if you're living in a condo or an apartment, you can set no go and even no mop zones. So that means if you don't want the vacuum to enter a specific area like your toilet or kitchen, you can set all of that on the app. There's also a feature where you can get regular cleaning schedules according to your needs. In my case, I always set the Roborock to run around 4pm so when I reach back home, my house is really clean. Okay, so now you know the features and what you can actually do with it. So how good is it at cleaning your house? Well, pretty good I'll say. It definitely saves me a lot of time sweeping every day and it's even better if you have a pet around your house. Freya sheds a lot and dog fur is really fine so you really can't see where they are if you are using a broom. So it's definitely nice to have a robot vacuum around the house. Besides vacuuming, there is also a mopping feature on the S7. But what's special about this device is that it comes with Vibra Rice. This means that it can detect if there's any carpet in its way and it will automatically retract the mop to avoid the carpet from getting wet. The S7 also retracts its mop when docked. The S7's mop also uses a special sonic scrubbing technology to apply up to 3000 vibrations per minute. Basically, it's the same concept as an electric toothbrush. But I don't really trust the mopping function especially when it comes to killing bacteria. This is because you can't add floor cleaner to the S7 so it's only using the vibration and some water. It just doesn't feel as clean and I like that the floor cleaner adds a bit of the fragrance. 
Since the Roborock S7 can do both mopping and vacuuming simultaneously, I just let it do both. Then when it's done, I go through again manually with the mop and floor cleaner. I would also recommend that you do the same because you can't really rely solely on the S7. Because of its size, it can't really reach tight spots or go under really low furniture, so you will still need to clean those by yourself. So once you are done vacuuming, it's time to clean the vacuum itself and the process is actually pretty straightforward. Just lift the lid, remove the dustbin and pour the dust out into the rubbish bin and you are basically good to go. There's also a washable filter inside so if it gets too dirty, you can actually wash the filter with clean water. The mopping pack can also be washed with clean water. But I really do hope they give an extra mop because you can swap it when you're cleaning multiple rooms. But if you need any of it to be replaced, you can actually get it online because out of the box, there won't be any extra accessories. You can purchase the spare parts individually or get the all-in-one bundle which includes a washable filter, a roller brush mop and a detachable mop cloth for the price of 226 ringgit and 10 cents. I don't know objectively if this is considered expensive, but to me, that's a lot of money considering you need to change it every 3 to 6 months. It is definitely more expensive than the cleaning supplies that I'm using right now. Alright, so let's talk about its price. The Roborock S7 carries a hefty price tag of 2,099 ringgit at the time of this review. And if you combine that with the maintenance cost, it is definitely not a cheap investment. But after using the Roborock S7, I understand why people would get a robot vacuum. One of the biggest benefits of owning a robot vacuum is that they are super easy to use. Once the vacuum is programmed for a given space and time, you are basically set. It's crazy how they can remember the layer of your space and once they are done cleaning, they'll just find their way home back to the charging station. Plus, if you do own a pet that sheds a lot, you'll be really glad to have this thing around. Not only it will save you time, but sometimes it can also pick up more fur than you might be able to manually. But if it's up to me, I wouldn't buy the Roborock S7 because I think it's a bit too pricey. Plus, I don't really use the mopping feature because I don't think it's really that clean. Instead, I'll go for something a bit simple and affordable like the Xiaomi Smart Robot Vacuum Cleaner 1C. It can still mop and vacuum but it's just 799 ringgit. But these are my thoughts about the Roborock S7, so what do you guys think? Remember to put them down in the comments section below. Alright, so before we end today's video, let's react to some comments. So, uh, I will be reacting to the M1 MacBook uh, video. So, Naruto5046 says, Hi, would you recommend the Intel MacBook Pro or the M1? So, um, if you absolutely have to get it right now, I suggest you pick the Intel version because for the M1 version, there are still a lot of apps that are lacking support and the experience won't be as good as the Intel version. But if you can wait for 1-2 to two years, maybe you can consider it by then. Alright, so thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like our video if you liked it and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and also click on the notification bell icon so you won't miss any of our future videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!